Okay, so we just got the Acer Aspire VX15 laptop. This is probably the best mid-range gaming laptop we've seen yet. A KB Lake i7, 1050 Ti, 16 gigabytes of RAM. This is a really, really awesome system. So one of the biggest comparisons we're going to be making in this video is from this one to the Dell laptop that we just did, which is pretty much the same other than the fact that that is an i5, this has i7, and that has 8 gigabytes of RAM where this one has 16. Um, the build quality on this one is a little bit cheaper. I use air quotes for that because it's still really good. It doesn't feel flimsy, like it's, it feels good in the hand. It's also a little bit thicker than the other one, but there's also an upside to that because the cooling is much better. Um, and is much quieter while gaming. So that's definitely a really welcome change. Um, it also has USB Type-C, which is really awesome. You want that in pretty much any laptop you buy uh, nowadays because that's becoming the new standard. So first impressions on this laptop are really good. All right, so another thing that's cool about this laptop is also much lighter than the Dell. Uh, so it's more portable in that way. Um, and overall, Another really cool thing about this laptop is the display is beautiful. It is a 1080p, but it's IPS, and compared to the Dell, it's much crisper. Like, they cut corners in different ways because they do have to make these laptops $1,000 and they have really high-end components. This one has a little bit cheaper build quality, but the other one has a much worse display. So, um, they have trade-offs of their own, but I would prefer these trade-offs to the other laptop because I found myself noticing that display a lot, and this one was much cleaner. Um, and the keyboard is um, really nice, good travel distance. The trackpad is also great. So I have no complaints really so far. Okay, so now we're gonna do a sound test of the laptop. So we're now going to run Cinebench to the stress test the CPU and this is going to be a pretty interesting comparison between this laptop and the Dell because it's going to be the difference between the i5 and the i7 in this. So let's see what kind of score we get. Okay, so the Cinebench scores are in. Um, we scored 730 on the CPU which is a phenomenal score and 88.98 FPS on the OpenGL. Now to compare this to the Dell laptop, which is like right in this range, it scored significantly higher. It scored 214 points higher on the CPU and a little bit over nine FPS higher on the OpenGL. And this is, like we said, all CPU bound. So that's really impressive. And that's a pretty big difference when you think about it. So that's the difference between the i5 and i7 in the same KB Lake generation. And from KB Lake to Sky Lake um, on the Alienware, this actually scored a bit higher, about three FPS higher on the OpenGL and about 50 higher on the CPU score. So that's pretty impressive, just with like pretty much a higher clock speed from generation. So really impressive read and write scores on this laptop. Interestingly enough, it is three times faster on the read than it was on the Dell. And the write speed is just a bit faster on this, but that's still really nice. Okay, so our Fire Strike score was 6,595. That was about 100 more than the Dell. The only reason that happened was because the physics score went up a bit. But the physics score, interestingly enough, went up around 4,000 points, which is pretty impressive. That's due to the hyper-threading. But um, in the real world for gaming, remember that this isn't going to change that much. From i5 to i7 is never that big of a jump. The i7 does better in things like CPU-based things because it can take advantage of that hyper-threading. But most games are designed to run on a quad-core CPU, so you only see like a two to three frame benefit when you're actually in games. So this is extraordinarily enjoyable to game on. Um, the frame rate is not only high, it's around like 180 to 200, but it's so consistent that there's never any stuttering and it just feels so smooth. The laptop's also extremely quiet for a laptop. Um, I've never seen anything like this. All the other ones definitely have a bit of a whine to them. This has pretty much nothing. It's even more silent than my desktop, which is amazing. 
Okay, so also the display is really, really nice. Definitely not 4K or anything, but it looks really clean and crisp. Um, the i7 is definitely drawing a few more frames. This is a very CPU-bound game, much more than a lot of other ones. Like, if you play a game like Battlefield 1, it's going to be pretty much identical to the i5 because that's much more GPU-bound. And as far as other games, we're not really going to test any more on uh, this because all the other games we tested in the other video, which we'll link on the top, um, with the 1050 Ti, those games were all very GPU bound, so it would only be like a one to two frame difference with this, if that. So if you want to see how this performs in most games, check out that video. Okay, um, we just opened up the laptop. It was a huge pain. <laughs> huge <laughs> pain. If we had known where to pull, it would have been fine, but we didn't. So in terms of upgradability, this is like a B minus C. Um, the Dell is better. You can access the RAM, you can go all the way up to 32 gigabytes. Um, it's very simple on the inside, very bare bones. This looks like the right size for a two and a half inch uh, drive, but we don't see the connector. So it, uh, it leads me to believe that this is not for an extra um, 2.5 inch drive because there's no way to like fasten it in. And if like say this empty connector here was something that transferred into power and SATA to plug in a drive, that feels like a very proprietary connector. It's not like you could go on eBay or something and order whatever the hell this is to um, SATA. So I would say it's pretty much not upgradable as far as um, storage goes, unless you buy a bigger M.2. Okay, so to sum this up, we recommend the Acer overall more because you could get pretty much the same spec between these. This one comes configurable with an i7 and 16 gigs, which would make these pretty much identical in performance, like as close as you could possibly get. Maybe the read and write speeds might be a little bit different depending on the manufacturer they use for the SSD, but about the same. We believe the trade-offs are better on this, a little bit worse build quality with a much better screen versus a more, I guess, industrial build quality with a lesser screen that doesn't really look all that good. So overall, the Acer is definitely the laptop to go with.